<laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, yes, we'll drink as much as we can, and uh, I think Manolis has a bunch of uh, reserved cigarettes in his trunk if you want to ask him for some of those. He buys them by the bag. <laughs> Uh, and if you're like, who's Manolis? Well, he's the next guy that's gonna come up here. Uh, this guy is uh, my best friend, and he's uh, the guy that introduced me to Donnie Coy on the uh, on the Hooters patio on Upper James. <laughs> and there is a big banner. I just started doing comedy, and uh, there's a big banner on the patio with Donnie's face on it. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I want to do that, and uh, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a very, very close friend of Donnie's, uh, Manola Zontanos, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Um, funny enough, before I came up here, I looked at my watch, because I'm thinking like, hey, I want to make sure I don't go over time, and I'm like, what am I doing? All right. I'm an idiot. I, uh, we all know Donnie for a long time. I was one of those guys that... I did Amber Tonight, and I got to know Donnie from uh, doing Amber Tonight, and um, and then we slowly just became friends, and then out of nowhere, I, uh, like, Donnie was like, like, like not, like, you know, he's not, he was kind of retired, but still doing stand-up, he wasn't involved in the clubs anymore, and then, and then it, he'd always want me to take him to reserve, the reserves to get reserve spirits like once a month and I and I don't know I just like you know it's like it's one of those things if you know Donnie you just it's it's almost impossible to say no to him like you're like all right yeah I'll take you to the reserve like let's go and that turned and then like like that was the next 20 years of my life <laughs> I just whatever, like, whatever like I was always I was that I was the guy I was I'd pick him up take him reserves I'd take him shopping I, if you needed something I was just like and people like uh, would be like, "Why do you do all this stuff for Donnie?" I'm like, "Like I don't know. Like I don't even know why. I, I couldn't even tell you why I do it. And it's like I knew I just wanted. It's like I had to do it. I wanted to do it. Like he drove me crazy, but then at the same time I loved him. You know what I mean? And then uh, and just doing all the. I did all these gigs with him back in the day. And my this is probably my favorite Donnie story that I ever experienced with Donnie Coy. Where like he like he was all he was like running late, so he you know, waiting for him. He gets in my car. We're going to I'm gonna I think, I'm gonna say I think it was Ajax, right? I think we're doing Ajax Yachts, okay? So we're going to Ajax Yachts. He gets in my car. It's like it's Friday and there's traffic, and he gets uh he gets in my car with a red cop. So he's like he's already bringing a traveler with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just he's already he's, he's drinking he's drinking a black Russian on the way to the gig, which is fine. Like that's I'm okay, I'm okay with that. And uh, we're like 20 minutes into the drive, and he goes, ah, fuck. He goes, fuck, I gotta pee. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, what do you, what do you want me to do? It's like, do you want me to pull over? Do you want to go to gas station? So no, no, we can't. We're gonna be late. We're gonna be late. And I'm like, I go, and I just go, I'm like, I just go like, oh well. Uh, I go, I go, I remember, I, do you want to pee in this Tim Hortons cup? I go, I have empty Tim Hortons cup. And he goes, he goes, okay, perfect. And he tries to pit, piss in this Tim Hortons cup, but he's older, right? And he, he can't, he can't get the angle. Like he's, he's pinched himself like he can't piss, right? So yeah, he's like, I can't do it. I'm like, so I jokingly, I had this, I had this funnel in the back of my car, like on the, on the back seat. Super like why would it be there? Because that was actually it was this funnel that like had a, like a like it was in the middle. After the funnel was like there was a bend in it, like a bending straw, and then it was solid. So it was like a funnel that was this long for oil. And why was it there? Because I am too cheap to buy a ice scraper, and I was using it <laughs> to, to, to scrape ice off my fucking window. Like you know what I mean? So I had this funnel slash ice scraper like in the back seat of my car, and I just jokingly say. Hey, do you want to use this? And he goes, perfect. And he proceeds. This this blows my fucking mind. Proceeds. He puts his um, there's, there's his penis into the funnel, and then bends it and puts the other part into the into the cup. And then all of a sudden you hear like this all years. It's like it's coming out like a fucking river. That's not the fucked up part. And all of a sudden, this is my car. And all of a sudden he says, oh fuck, I think the cop tipped. <laughs> yeah, so now he's just, he's pissing 
on the floor of my car through a funnel. And then he finishes, he's like, oh, I, it's all in the cup. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's all in my car. And he just throws this cup that has like this much piss in it out the window. And then we proceed to drive to Ajax. And that's to me Donnie Coy in a nutshell. Like, this is... find, find another person in the world that would do that. Yeah, find another person in the world that would like, like, any other person in the world, like you would kick them out of your car. But no, I went to the gig and came back with them with my car smelling like piss, Donnie Coy piss, which is... <laughs> Mostly vodka. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. We could have drank it. <laughs> <laughs> So he always, he always drove me crazy like that, and then uh, like I always felt like the need to get back at him for some stupid reason. And, and he, he's one Donnie Quinn's one of those guys that just if you try to t if you try to talk to him, and like if he asked you a question and then you try to answer him, he would cut you off and give you the answer too. Like he would just not let you talk. And and then one time he's like we're like doing Mississauga Yucks, and it's like we're doing. I think there was a, there was this was there was still a Sunday night show. I think it was a Sunday night. Event, I think. And it was like, the show was at uh, nine o'clock. It was a nine o'clock show or something like that. And he goes, what time is the show tomorrow? Because I have to pick him up again. He goes, what time is the show tomorrow? And I go, I'm about to say eight o'clock. And, go, and he goes, and he, and he goes, nine, what does he say? He says, nine o'clock. He goes, eight o'clock? No, that's what he said. He goes, eight o'clock? And it was nine o'clock. I go, yeah, eight o'clock. But it was really nine o'clock. So I, I go, what time do you want to leave? I go, I got like 7.30, I'm like, no, 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 earlier than that, what if there's traffic? So I picked Donnie Coy up at 6.30 <laughs> to take him to Mississauga Yachts, which is like a 30 minute drive at best, <laughs> maybe 25 minutes. So I fucking pick him up at like six, like I, I'm, I'm giggling now because I know Donnie doesn't want to get to gig that early. So I'm, I'm, I'm suffering too, right? I don't need to be there that early, right? So I pick him up at six o'clock, 6.10, and then we drive, I'm like, it's not even seven o'clock yet, and the show's not for another two hours. He goes into the club, and he goes, he comes up, what the fuck? What the hell's going on? The chairs are still on the table. Did you know the show started at nine o'clock? I'm like, Donnie, that's like, you told me this is what time the show started. And so then he proceeded to go to Swish LA and drank, drank uh, Black Russians for the next couple hours until the show started. And uh, yeah. Yeah, there was a switch. Yeah, the yeah, sucker, the switch away. Yeah, switch away. Yeah, he would just switch. <laughs> he would just. There was a there was a switch away. I'm talking, walking towards Kenny like it's a talk show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a switch away. You want to see? But yeah, that's just what killed me. Like he didn't even want to drink at Yuck Yucks. He wanted to go switch away and be mad because I got him there through two and a half hours early. But this is the best uh, thing he's ever done for me. Like as far as uh, being a stand-up comedian. It's weird uh, standing here. I'm a little flustered, and uh, just because like uh, you know, Kenny's here and Mark's here, and, and these guys are like uh, like uh, they're like kind of like my comedy dads. You know what I mean? Like they're they're uh, they're like uh, it's like I I would die for you guys. I literally would die for you guys, and uh, and I would have died for Donnie too. And uh, I remember like I first got fucking uh, I got like promoted. A fast track, and I started doing. I was like middling. I was just middling shows, and like when you go from like guest spots to middling, it's very overwhelming. Like as a young comic, because you're like now you're thinking in your head like, holy shit, these people are paying money to see stand up comedy, and like I have to. I feel like if I don't do well, they fucking like I'm like I feel like I'm screwing their night. You know, like there's all these inner thoughts that you're having like about that, right? And I was like, uh, we're no, we're doing Windsor. And we're like I did, I don't know. It was like two or three. Shows. Or, it was Donnie for sure. <laughs> Fine. Instead of Donnie, it's like no, it wasn't Windsor. No. So we did Windsor, and we're coming back. We're coming back from Windsor, and I, I was having, like, cause he could tell that I was nervous. He was watching the shows, and he, I think he was emceeing, and he was like. He saw that I was one show I do good, one show I didn't do good, one show I did good, like I was back and forth. And he said to me, you know, here's the thing. I don't know, we're just driving, we're halfway back home. He's like, an audience is like, it's like if you ever go to someone's house and they have a dog, you don't know the dog, and you just walk in, they see him. If you, like, if you're, all of a sudden, if you're scared of the dog and you're like, you back up 
from the dog and the dog will growl more if you're scared of it. But if you just stay relaxed and you let the dog sniff your hand, and before you know it, you're playing with its ear, and before you know it, the dog's on his back, you're playing with its belly, and you're just like, everything's fun. And like, that's what an audience is like. Like you just, they, they can sense that you're like this tension that you're giving out. And I couldn't believe that it gave me this fucking nugget. Like, like from that moment on, it just changed everything where I'm like, yeah, what, what am I holding on to this scary energy for like when I don't need to and just like be more relaxed and open to the concept of the stand up comedy and just having a good time. So yeah, that's all I want to say about Donnie Cohen. I love it. Um, you come back up. All right, thank you, Manolas. Uh, we've got, uh, we'll have another, one more speaker, and then we'll uh, 